Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. I have something to show you. This came in the mail yesterday, and it's from Argentina, and it's a tarot deck. And it's a deck that I buy backed on Kickstarter. Now, you can see that it's not going to be a real unboxing, but it is an unboxing. What happened was, when this arrived to me, the paper packaging on this was so wet. It's been raining here for the last four days straight. And I was worried about the content, so I opened it up to make sure that everything was okay, that um, water wasn't getting into the deck. So the deck is still wrapped in its plastic. So it really is still an unboxing, but yeah, maybe half and half. You decide. Is it an unboxing or is it not? Still, it'll also be a walkthrough. Now, this is not really a traditional uh, Marseille deck, um, but I will do it side by side with a Converse style deck so that you see where, they, where it's similar and where it's different. So, if you'd like to see this beautiful, beautiful deck from Argentina, stay tuned and I'll turn the camera down. Well, friends, here we are. Let's see how this goes. Again, this is a deck from Argentina. And I was really excited to back this because when it came on Kickstarter, I had just come back from a trip to South America, which began in Argentina and moved around the southern peninsula to uh, Chile. And um, so I loved Buenos Aires, I loved parts of Chile, of course, as well, but when I saw this deck was from Argentina and it was based on a tango, I thought, I've got to have this. However, after I backed it, little story here, um, I started second guessing myself. I began worrying about this deck. Did I really do the right thing? Because as I recall, this is a collaborative deck. From what I recall, the majors are all created by different uh, creators, or by different artists. The minors are all uniform, but the majors, I believe, each one is created by a different artist. And I usually really, 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 really dislike collaborative decks. There's a lack of unity. But, of course, it's only the majors, so then I thought, well, it's only the majors. Maybe once I get the deck in my hands, I'll fall in love with it. Maybe I won't. So I'm really not sure how I'm going to feel about this deck when we actually look at it. But I'm ready to dive in if you are. Let me open this up and see what we've got. So what we have here is the Tarot Tango. And this came with, I forgot what this is. Is it a, okay, so yes. This came with a beautiful pouch. It's cotton with lovely gold um, embroidery on it. Tarot Tango, TT. Um, lovely drawstring. And the inside is not lined, but it doesn't need to be lined. It, but it's a very, very sturdy, soft cotton fabric. And it will draw very well. So I'm very happy with this bag. It's a lovely bag. And in addition to the bag, we've got a reading cloth, which is a lovely soft felt um, tarot tango. What I will do is, oh, look, look at that. Look at that image. Yeah, very, very uh, Argentinian tango, Tricky, especially Buenos Aires feeling to it, yeah? Um, I'll lay it out and I promise I will give you a full shot of both sides. This is a reversible cloth, lovely colors. So I'll put that in right now. We're back. So this is the deck um, and I'll put it side by side with my very, very trusty CBD Tarot de Marseille by your 
Dr. Yoav Vendov, um, because this deck has everything you need for a for seeing a Terre de Marseille by Nicholas Conver clearly, crisply. And um, nobody seems to object to any of these um, images on the cards. So this is a good standard comparison, I believe. Um, the size is a U.S. Games Terre de Marseille size. So that will also be a good comparison for you. And here is that deck. Here is what the back of the Yoav Vendov deck looks like. And let me open up the Tarot Tango, which I am really, really looking forward to exploring and looking forward to seeing if I can go with it, if I can fall in love with the majors or not. Because really, for me, the majors are... The most important part of the deck are the part of the deck where will either make or break the deck for me, usually. Now, this is a Tarot de Marseille style. I keep saying that. However, in truth, it's probably more Tarot de Marseille adjacent. Yeah, and you'll see why. Now, the box is a very, it's a flimsy-ish tuck box, but that's okay. Yeah, the box isn't everything, but it's a beautifully designed box. I love the colors, love the, the flourishes on the front. Main creators are Marianne Costa and Anna Grotch. Um, are the Major Arcana... Okay, so here are the artists for the Major Arcana. And here are the artists for the Minor Arcana. Um, here are for... Um, these are graphic design. Uh, content, produ uh, general production. Um, tango... Con I think this means tango content because this is a deck based on tango. Love the tango. This is what the back of the box looks like. This is the um, Il Mago, the mage, the uh, the magician, and I believe this is the sword, the sword suit. The swords, I believe, as I recall, are. Uh, is it the sword suit or is it? We'll see. We'll see. What's on this side? We have. Uh, el Tarot de Tango use dos mu mundos para crear un nuevo universe, universo. Este mazo de colección... Oh, I'm sorry. Reúne obras... ...invitas de 22 artistas... Okay, so basically what it's saying is... Um, this is a creation of two different worlds. Um, this um, comp compilation is works with, of 22 artists, basically saying it's a, comp a um, collaborative deck. Oh, here it is in English. Ha! A tarot, uh, the Tarot of Del Tango puts together two worlds to create a new universe. The collectible, this collectible deck of cards gathers never before seen art of 22 contemporary Argentine artists who portray the major arcana. The minor arcana is transformed into um, bandon, I'm sorry, the typeset is just a little bit small um, for reading in a foreign language. Bandoneones, bandoneones. Pacones, uh, Campagne, Glasses, and Farolas. All while Marian, uh, all while Marian Costa and Anna Grock write the lyrics of this adventure. So they're they're calling this a musical deck, basically, which it is, I believe, being a tango deck, uh, based on the flavor the emotion, the feel, I believe, of tango, tango. And we open the box and we have a book. The book is deck sized, which is wonderful. So if when I transfer this to the bag, see, that's why it's not so bad that this is in a flimsy-ish tuck box. We got the bag. Now, when I transfer this to the bag, this fits perfectly with the deck, which is wonderful. 
And let's see. Taro itu tango una hermana, hermandad secreta. So, let's see. This side is Spanish. This side is English. Yes, okay. So, um, I won't make you suffer through my attempting to dredge up my high school uh, Spanish. Um, and I'll read it in, read what I read in English. Tarot del Tango. Tarot and Tango, a secret brotherhood. Okay, so a short description of the creation. Um, the Major Arcana, 22 artists, and then we've got The Fool. So there are no card, oh, yes, okay, there are, there are card images, I'm sorry. So this is a card image, and let me straddle the decks. This is a card image, we have the description by, about the creator of the card, which is nice, we know about the creator of the card, we also know um, the description of the card. He is a wanderer, walker, and adventurer wa who leaves everything behind to venture into the unknown. In the ballad Yazola and Ferrer, he claims, I know I am Pianto. Pianat, uh, pian I'm sorry. Piantao. Crazy. And he likes the Milongure Guero, Milonguero in Padosa oh, Pola. Okay, I'm not going to make you suffer through my Spanish. Really, I'm not. Um, he roams the world with indomitable freedom. Freedom. The fool represents the fundamental energy that sustains the world, the flow of life, the irresistible forward movement of the abounding river that runs. He can be a sacred madman or a simple fool, a pilgrim or a vagabond, a fig a fugitive or a wise man. He cannot be limited to a single definition. He incites us to recognize a very strong inner impulse, whether it is to travel or, or to launch a new enterprise. On this card, the wandering fool is already withdrawing from the card, without second thought, always on the run. He's off to dance his ballad. Okay, so it looks like we do have some description of the art as, as long as a, a, um, a descriptive um, sense of the meaning. It's not keywords, it's not this card means blah blah blah. Um, we do have indications of meaning and indications of what the image in the card is about. Let's see, let's check this one. The magician was one of Carlos Gardel's nicknames, the inventor of Sung Tango, who achieved international fame by the in the early 1930s before dying tragically in a plane crash on June 24th, 1935. However, popular legend has it that he sings better every day. The magician of the tarot indicates it in, initiates, invents, in, inaugurates new adventures, new endeavors. Uh, this card represents the energy of beginnings, a new activity, a range of possibilities. Let's see. Well, in the youthfulness, he can either be... Okay, so they don't describe the image very closely. Okay, so that's something to be kept in mind. The, the, the description is not very close to describing the image on the cards. But it does give you a good general sense of what the way the cards can be read. So the minor arcana, the mi major arcana looks like this, and the minor arcana begins here, and we've got a general description of the minor arcana. We have four suits, the bandonen, band, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, uh, bandoneone, bandeno, bandoneons, wands in the traditional tech, the iconic instrument of tango. So the bandoneons are the, uh, the uh, concertina looking thing, I suppose, and they are the uh, wands. Yeah? The falcones, like the sword on the traditional tarot, represent the sharp clarity of the intelligence. Okay, so uh, there's not an actual sword, but uh, falcones, the cups, of champagne. These are champagne glasses for the cups. 
and the street lamps. The street lamps are the pentacles. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, the Minor Arcana goes on to give you descriptions by the number of the card. So we have the Aces together, then we have the Twos together. Very, very short descriptions. The Fours. Now when we get to the Court cards, let's see what happens there. Let's see. So, Court cards. The Sotas. The word Sota comes from Sub below. So the sotas are the pages, I suppose. Kings and queens and the knights. Okay, so here we have the sotas. sotas. Now you can see that the pages are primarily female presenting. The kings and queens, they have, we have them together. Re, reina, re, reina. Re reina, re reina, and the knights are male presenting. Caballero. Okay, so that's basically how this deck is going to be laid out. And you've got a taste of what the images will be like. This is a very thin deck. Now, compared to my US Games cardstock, this is a much shorter deck. So the cardstock is much thinner. Uh, let's see how we get into this. It, Feels like there might be a tab to open, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to go right in the top. Here we go. That's not difficult to open. And let's go for the back of the cards. This is the back. Ah, smells like fresh printing. Uh, beautiful backs. Simple, tasteful. I like the goldish colors. Uh, I like the red. Very passionate looking back of the cards. And that flourish that was on the front of the box is here too. Taro tango. And so the backs are reversible, if that is an important thing to you. Is it, is the, are the fronts reversible? That's going to be the question. Let's flip the deck over. So we start off with a card with the names of the, uh, the creators, which is wonderful. And they are in alphabetical order rather than in the order of the deck creation. And the first card is the Fool, El Loco. And you can see right off the bat, this is very different from a Tarot de Marseille. Yeah? So, again, I'm not sure how these diverse creations are going to work for me. However, I like the fact that the leg has gone outside of the self-created border here, which is neat, moving out and away. We don't have anything chasing after this fool. The fool is going off on their own. And here we have, yes, this is very, very, very thin. Oh, so this card stack, stock bends a lot. That's not so cool. Yeah, look at that. Shuffling this deck is going to require a lot of care because these cards are going to bend and probably fold very easily. Just something to be aware of. El Mago, the, the magician. We got stuff on the table. We got that, sure. Um, this was the name, the singer that they were talking about. Interesting design in the background. And here is La Papisa. Look at her. So we've got curtain going on. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see who this person is. Be it, it, that will be in the book. Love the heels on her. Yeah. Um, she's front facing, which is interesting. And she has no book, but she's ready to dance. Here we go with the Empress. Okay, so at the my first glance, I thought this was chest hair. That's not chest hair. Um, that's a flame on her chest. So we've got a very, a very fertile looking <laughs> empress here. Now we have things seeming to be growing out of her vagina. Yeah, we have children on one side and corn on the other. Very interesting. But notice the dancers here at the bottom. 
Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, the uh, concertina here as one of the elements. But yeah, we, we, I suppose we could think of these as her wand, I suppose. And she's got her shield. Moving on to, here we go, a completely different color. Yeah? El Emperador. Cubist, um, some, not exactly Cubist, but has the flavor of Cubism to me, but perhaps post-Cubism, with a bit of, what, vector arcs tap, slapped on the front? So this is the emperor. Very interesting. Looking like, um, I don't know, does that look like a, a machine gun to you? Looking a little bit gangster to me. Number four. And you see that this is also additive numbering. Now, it's not IV, it's four I's. Here we have El Papa. El Papa, we've got the cross here. We've got the gesture, a blessing gesture here. Now, we've got two acolytes here, but this guy does not look like this guy to me. This guy looks like a, a mob boss to me. But we'll have to, we'd have to check the book for that. However, we do have some symbols that a lot of us look for in a Pope card. Here we have El Enamorado, Enamorado, the lover. Now, this is singular as well. L'amoureux, l'amoureux, El Enamorado, a singular male lover. And you see the two women here. It looks like he's propos. I don't know. Does it look like he's proposing to this woman to you? Perhaps. Um, looks like we've got a, a kind of Cupid image on the at the top. We have that concertina again down here at the bottom. Having a, a, a kind of a tango. Yeah, it has a tango feel to it. We've got the skirts hiked up as the. Healed legs are raised, healed feet are raised. El carro. Okay, so now that's a that's a very mixed looking car, isn't it? Chariot. However, we do get the idea of it going in different directions. And a little bit Rider Waite Smith. Yeah, there's one side that's darker than the other. The dark horse, the light horse. One going straight, one going off to the side. Very interesting choice. Very, very interesting. So if you want to look for symbolism in this deck, it's there. It's there. Uh, we've got the plant life down there at the bottom. Very interesting. La Justicia. La Justicia. Um, the Justice card. Uh, does that look like she's got blood running out of her mouth? <laughs> be curious to see who she is supposed to be. Looks a little bit like someone, in, I don't know. Looks a little bit like an underworld character, like perhaps even a demon. I'm not sure about whether my perception is correct, but that's my first, my first view. Notice the sword is not being held up by her, but is resting against her the armrest of her throne. Del Rio, Del Rio de. I wonder if this is. I don't know what this is. There's something. To, there, was, there are words around this disc in the back. Moving on to El Ermitaño, the hermit. Looking a little bit cubist here. Um, but we got the lamp, we got the, the walking stick, we got the light shining, an older man with, with... Now, to me, these look like old people goggles, but maybe not. And we go to... Rueda de Fortuna, the Wheel of Fortune. So I wonder if the book is going to explain all of these people here. The, it looks like a ship's wheel, right? A ship's steering wheel. <laughs> um, there's a word for that, isn't there? Tell me in the comments below. But yeah, it looks like the wheel of a ship. And there they are on a ship. And this guy looks like the guy from the Hermit's card, from the, I'm sorry, the um, El Papa, from the Pope's card, doesn't he? 
And it, he looks a little bit like this guy, too, to me, from The Hermit. Uh, I wonder if he actually is a deliberately recurring figure in this deck. Okay, so we've got two apparent dancers here as well. One going up, one coming down. Guess we could see it that way. And La Fuerza. Here we go. Notice the Lemniscuit on her hat. Also a third eye. Interesting addition. Um, there's a door in this lion going into another universe. Interesting. The colors are beautiful. The colors are startling, almost, in this card. Some cards have very rich, vibrant colors. Some, not so much. Yeah? So, it's, it's interesting. This is one reason why I don't usually bond very easily to collaborative decks. There's, it feels disjointed. It feels like I'm being shook about by the, by the art styles. I think this deck is going to take me some t time to get used to. This is El Colgado, the Hanged Man, Le Pendu. Yeah? Interesting that we can see the guy's bones, like he's being x-rayed as he's being hung from above. Yeah? The arms are at the sides, which is an interesting choice. The flame from his, behind his hat, behind his hat, instead of the hair. But we don't have really the supports visible here. Instead, we've got a whole city behind him. Here we go with card 13. I'm glad they didn't add a name to this. That's very good. But we have, what, the Dance of Death? La Danse Macabre? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, we've got a dancing couple here for death with no body parts on the floor, on the ground, I mean. And that arch in the background is inter an interesting choice, an interesting addition, with maybe the Eye of God back there. Maybe. Okay, moving on to temperen Templanza, or Temperance. And here we have, these more, look more like accordions to me than our concertinas. Um, but yeah, we got two women holding them up, so... Instead of one woman holding up two cups, we've got two women holding up one each, um, an accordion. But they're crossed over, so they have to balance as they play. They have to, yeah, work together to create their music. But it's interesting, down here it only looks like there are legs for one person, so that's an interesting thing. Okay, moving to El Diablo. So we have a definite addictive kind of feel to this card, right? We've got the demon coming out of the bottle of, looks like possibly wine to me, but alcohol. Um, we've got the demon coming out of her mouth. Very inter interesting choices. Very different from a Terre de Marseille uh, Diablo card. And the La Casa Dios, La Maison Dieu. And here we have the lightning. We've got shoes falling down instead of people. High heels. No men's shoes. That's interesting. Where are the guys? Um, but yeah, this tower is cracking apart. The foundation looks very weak, very unstable, ready to topple. These, this cardstock really is very, very thin. Um, we'll see what, how it riffle shuffles. Uh, La Estrella, Le Toi. So, again, we've got another, this is more of a concertina, perhaps. Um, both jars are pouring into the lake, but we do have one foot on land, one in the water. Looking very, very much like uh, mm, an, an East Asian style of uh, cartoon. To me, living in Korea, that's the first thing that I think of. Looks very Japanese-Korean style to me. Um, but the stars are there in a similar order. We got different coloration to the stars, which is nice. Uh, we got the ibis there on the tree, on the palm tree or the other tree here. 
We got a lot of what we need, plus a little bit of extra. And here we have La Luna. Oh, look at that Luna. Look at her. We got the side facing moon. So this is type two. <laughs> I don't think we could really say that this is a type one or a type two. This is its own thing, right? But still, side facing moon, so it's type two. Um, we got the towers here, but they're they're sunk in the water, which is interesting, yeah? The towers are sunk in the water, and here's a crayfish, I think, or a lobster, way out there in the different in the distance. Two dogs. I love the positioning of her here. By the lamppost. A very sexy card. And El Sol. I like that this is a woman in a suit. I love that. Very, very sexy. Very, very um, post basic instinct kind of card to me. Very, very tango. Tango. We got the sun here. The smoke coming out of her mouth. But still, a very different feel to me from the, tra from the traditional Marseille, Les Soliers. Yeah? She looks a little fierce, a little determined, whereas these kids look like they're happy, successful, um, enjoying life, enjoying the radiance of the sun. She looks like she's out to get someone to me. Yeah? A very sexual and very determined look on this card. El Judicio. So we got the angel, we got the two people rising up from a dip instead of rising up from a grave, perhaps. Um, I like the color on this card. I like the two-tone on this card. I wouldn't mind the entire Major Arcana being like this, frankly. And we got that feeling of the concertina here on the top. Lovely, beautiful, beautiful design, beautiful detail in this card. And it looks like we've got the name of the creator down here. Do we have the names of the creators in the images? No, I don't see the name of the creator in this image. So it's not all, but there's the name of the creator signed on this one. And El Mundo, very different world card, right? Looks like a heart. Well, it is. Yes, it is. It's a heart in the center of a globe. And we have, okay, so what do we have here? We've got a teapot, we've got a bus, we've got a, a, a Victrola with a bird flying out of it, and we've got a seltzer bottle. Okay, so this is air? Well, okay, what, what do these two mean to you? To me, this is a representation of Scorpio, which is air, which is water. This is a representation of Aquarius, which is actually an air sign. So to me, these two would be better reversed. This, look, this says Aries. This is, oh, aire, agua, tierra, fuego. Okay, fuego, so fire for the, under the tea kettle, sure. Tierra, land, earth, yeah? agua, water, aire, air. But to me, these two are reversed, whatever. <laughs> Ever, to each his own, and my own is, this is water, this is air. And, okay, so here we go. This starts off with the swords. Yes, these are the swords. So let me get, let me fish the swords out for here. Let me see, my swords are at the back. So let me put the swords on the top and go one by one. So we've got a sword, we've got a hand, we've got a, a, the cuff of a suit jacket and the white uh, dress shirt, which is lovely. I love the colors on this. The minor arcana, I think I'm going to really like. And like I said, these are going to be Marseille adjacent because there are going to be some things that are very similar to a Marseille. Oh, this is not. Okay, so less adjacent than I thought. Maybe you should just call it a pick deck right from the start. Um, but I love the decoration around these swords. They're beautiful. And here we go with the three. Love the flowers. Um, do the flowers change? It looks like 
These flowers are going to remain the same, but these are possibly going to change from card to card. Let's see if I'm correct. Here we go with the four. Okay, yes, so some variation there. The five. No, we're back to the flowers from the, no? Ah, so the four and the five flowers are similar, right? Yeah, these flowers are very similar. This flower has become that sword, that knife. And here we go with the six. Interesting layout. And the seven. These swords are beautiful. They are lovely. Do you read pip cards the same way as you would read a Marseille deck? Or do you have differences? Do you re read them differently? Let me know in the comments below. I'm still at the point where I would read this like I would read this. But I'd like to hear about you. It's interesting that these points are all pointed towards what look to me to be coins. Or at least gold discs. And here we go with the nine. Central sword pointing up. And the ten. Okay, so we've got the two crossed swords. Like this. Moving on to... Aha! Here we go with the page. Now notice this. Okay, so we've got this sword in the hand. Up. And instead of the sheath, we've got a violin. Love to see her play this violin with that sword. <laughs> that would be something to behold. But beautiful. Looking the same way, which is nice. Here we go with the caballero. And they don't name the suit down here, which is interesting. Yeah? He's got the sword in the, his left hand. And a mic in his right hand, which is interesting. So this person is more of a singer than a dancer, perhaps? We got the floor at below. And Reina, the queen. Now, she is definitely a queen. She is definitely a queen, but she's not seated. Yeah, she's standing, um, looking very poised, looking in the same direction, similar direction at least. Uh, she's got her sword in her left hand rather than her right. No crown, but that's okay. Crowns are not tango, are they? And the king. Definitely looking like a king to me, a young king. So have to see what the cups and the pentacles kings look like. Are they older, more mature, or are they young like this guy is? But we got the sword in the left hand. He looks like he looks like he's ready to shed a little bit of blood, if you ask me. But hey, it's just me, not seated. And okay, so the next here is the cups. Let me find the cups for this deck. I've got my cups here. So here we have a hand offering the cup, which is unusual. And it's a very, reminds us nothing of the city of Jerusalem, does it? <laughs> not, a, not a church chalice by any means. Definitely a beautiful uh, champagne cup, glass. I love the decoration around the sides here here we have the two okay so we don't have any information about the publisher down here at the bottom but that's fine uh we've got the decoration coming up the side the center i have a feeling the cup suit is going to be much more similar to Tower de marseille which is why i remember this suit and maybe even the coin suit and that's what made me think ah yes it is very similar to Terre de Marseille. Marseille is Jason, but really those swords are not Terre de Marseille. Okay, so this works for me in a Terre de Marseille reading. Now we've got the one above, two below. Here we have the four. Yeah. So design elements very similar. I love that they used red around the rim of the champagne glasses and also down below. The five, look at that. Okay, beautiful. Layout is just the same. Oh, okay, nope, I lied. So here we go. Here's where we diverge. We have 
six cup instead of three on the sides, we got three on top, three on the bottom. And here we go with the sevens. Now the sevens are a little bit more similar, although this is more of a circle with something in the center instead of three li two lines of three and then one in the center. Here we go with the eights. Now here we go back to Terre de Marseille layout. The nines. Okay. This is the most logical layout for the nine cups anyways, right? And the tens. Okay, so we do have the one big one on top pouring out to the one, little ones below. So it's just a couple of uh, the cards in the cup suit which diverged. Yeah, the six and the seven diverged from Terre de Marseille layout. The rest of them are pretty much the same. And here we have the page, Valet, Sota, de Coppe. Okay, so we've got a piano player with her glass of champagne. Interesting, which is, I usually would have thought of a piano as being an air instrument, personally. Uh, Caballero, we have the knight holding a mic. So, okay, now this is an interesting thing to think about. Maybe the mic I see as air, and I see the knights as air signs, as air uh, elements for the court cards. I know a lot of people see the knights as fire. I see the knights as air, probably because of my Thoth um, background. I see the knights as air, um, which is similar to the princes in Thoth. So that, which would be interesting because the mic kind of feels kind of airy, kind of feels kind of airy. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Um, and so maybe this is a little bit earthy. Hmm. Let me take a quick look at the, the page for... So, an instrument. Instruments for earth, mics for air, for air, water for... No, no, I'm sorry. No, I don't think that really works. It, it started to... Something started to click, but I think that was just a false alarm. Okay, let's move on to... Caballero for, oh, I'm sorry, Caballero. Now we got the horse, we got the cup, we got an extra microphone, which is neat. And La Reina, she's not seated, but she is in a somewhat seated dance pose. I suppose you could say that, holding her cup in her right hand instead of her left. No sword, no additional accoutrement. Um, we got a red flower on, in her hair. Perhaps a hint or a, a nod to the crown. Blue dress. And red. Okay, does he look more mature to you than perhaps this king? I suppose, I suppose you could say that his hair is a little gray. Can you see that? That his hair is just a little bit gray. Maybe he's a little bit older. Okay. Uh, moving on. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we've got... Just a second. This card is out of place. This card is out of place. Okay, so just notice that. We'll bring him back in in just a moment. This is the King of Cups. So, does he look older? Maybe. Maybe. I don't see any gray in his hair, but... Gray suit? Hmm. Okay, moving on to the pentacles. Here's, here are the pentacles. The lampposts. And no hand holding this one, which is good. And here we go. Okay, so we have that banner, right? Not going completely around, but we've got the nod to the banner. Terra del Tango 2020. Received in 2021. Here are the three pentacles. We've got that layout, right? Here we have the four with the little shield in the middle, which is good. So every so often, I mean, there are, there are touches of Terre de Marseille here, right? The five, same layout. Now let's see what they do with the sixes. The sixes are, is, are an important thing to me. And yes, they keep that wheel shape, which I like. That's good. So the pentacles are sh 
laid out much more like the Tarot de Marseille than, oh, and here we have a, well, it's not a fail, but here we have a divergence. Ah, so the sevens are different. Okay. But the eights are not. The eights are the same. Lovely floral decoration here in the center. Here we go with the nines. Very similar. Not so enclosed as a standard, for example, Convert nine of coins of Denari, but get the sense of it, don't we? And the 10. Yes, very, very much RWS. I'm sorry, <laughs> TDM, TDM. Let's see, here we go with the Sota. Here we have another instrument in the Ballet de Denier, the Sota. She's playing her lampos. This could be a little bit difficult to miss if you're not careful, I think, but it's there. Clearly it's there. And here we have the Knight Caballero. Here's the lamp up, up on top. You got the mic in the hand. Very tastefully done, very sexy looking Caballero. Here we have La Reina, very sexy looking Reina. Yeah? Leaning up, look at that pose against that lamppost. Perfect. She's perfect. Come get me if you dare. If you dare. Are you up to me? <laughs> I love that. Okay. And here we go with the king. And again, maybe, maybe he looks older than the, the, uh, the pe, the roi de pe, roi de pe. So, this is the wand suit. And one thing that will help remembering that this is wands is that it's green. Now, you, one might think that this would be an air suit because of all the air that you would use to play this instrument, but this is the wand suit. And we notice the green wands. Two of wands. Sorry, the cards are starting to fall over on me. So we don't get them crossed here, do we? The three of wands. Okay, so the wands suit is also going to be going their own way. We don't have we don't have that crossover look to them. The four of wands. Or baton. The five. Very, very different. But beautiful. Beautiful. The filigree around the side is lovely. I like the flowers. I like the consistency within the suit. The s did I say six? Yes, that was that was six. We were just looking at six. Yes, this is seven. Three on this side, one in the center. Looking a little bit like caterpillars now to me. Here we go with the eight. And the nine. Look at that. Look at the card. These cards are bowing already. Change of um, humidity, I think. I've got the heater going in here. And the ten of baton. Interesting. So we got four on the sides, two in the center. Well, okay, so we got two in the center, four of them. The math make, adds up, yeah? Here we have the Sota, Ballet de Baton. Now, her instrument is her instrument, is her suit. Now, the other instruments were not their suit, but this one, her instrument is her suit, right? And the Caballero. We got the, the, the instrument hanging over the poor horse's butt. <laughs> um, got a mic in the hand. And here we go with the Queen, Reina. She, lo she looks like she knows how to work that instrument, doesn't she? Love her dress. Love the slit. And the, the, um, the net top on to her bodice. The net sleeves and shoulders on her bodice. Beautiful. And Roy, Roy de Baton. So, what do you think about this? I have now decided it is not 
in Terra de Marseille adjacent, it's just a pip deck. That's my decision. This is a uh, pip deck um, with nods to Terra de Marseille. Now, let's see how this is going to shuffle. Like I said, I'm a little concerned by the thinness of this card stock. Yeah? It's really, really bendy, and I think if, you're, if I'm not careful, I will be able to fold these cards without even trying. So it overhands nicely, but notice this card. This card wants to slip up, yeah? And if I, I'm not careful, I'm gonna bend that card. I'm gonna bend that card because these cards really are very, very thin. Um, I've got a Tarot de Marseille deck from Argentina, a real de Marseille deck um, that I bought from Argentina with not similarly uh, thin cardstock, but with very cardy cardstock. Yeah, not playing cardstock, but more like, I don't know, book cardstock or the cardstock that you would use to make file folders. Very, very uh, different for, for me, cardstock. But they overhand okay. But again, one card goes flying, do not go rushing to catch it. <laughs> before it lands, yeah? Let's see how it riffle shuffles. Let's see. So yeah, it's got a really limp, whoa, a very, very, very limp riffle shuffle. So cardstock is not my favorite, but, whoa, okay, so yeah. This is not a very happy to shuffle deck. Let me do a little bit of, let me do a poll for us. Let's see, what message would be good for us to hear? What would be a message that would be beneficial for all of us right now, gathered together, to hear? I don't feel like this is actually shuffling very well. Not the cardstock, but um, I don't think the cards are being dispersed very well. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Because the cardstock is so weak, I don't think that they're shuffling very well. Not just the bendiness of it, but also the way that they would, are distributing themselves. Let me try a couple more. What is a good message for us to hear? What would be a beneficial message for us to hear today? One more, and then I'll do an overhand. What is a beneficial message for us to hear today? Now, my off-the-cup Tarot de Marseille reading skills are not are not 100%. Uh, my confidence is not 100%. Let me say that. Now, I get out a Rider Waite Smith deck and poof, boom, boom, boom. I look at the cards and I can give you a quick reading, no problem. Tear to I say I'm not, my confidence is not there yet. But let's see what we can do. Okay, so I'm going to do a three card because for me, Tear de Marseille can never be read in one card. We've got the Sota, we've got, oh, okay. Okay, so they mixed better than I thought they would. Now, can I shuffle, can I do a reverse shuffle on this deck? Let me just take a look. Will, are these reversible images? The, okay, the swords, we could tell, up and down for the swords. Uh, the cups would be easy to tell. These make it a problem for me. Yeah, these wands, I would have a really difficult time determining what is top and bottom, and I don't wanna put a mark on the top. And I don't see anything here that would indicate to me top or bottom. So for me, this is not going to be a reversible deck. Um, now the the earth sign, the what would normally be a denier, but the lampposts, the, I could tell top, top and bottom. But the concertinas, the instruments, um, for me will not be reversible. So yeah, yeah, this is a non-reversible deck for me. 
just for me. If you want to put a dot there, that would be perfect. Uh, so what do we get? We've got the Seven of Cups, which is um, enjoying community. It's To me, the Sevens are bringing the element out into community. And so we've got our beginning passions, maybe not quite being sure of what to do with our desires, with our desire to create, with our desire to perhaps dance, to, to create, to love. We've got that beginning of something here that we're not quite sure to, what to do with. And so perhaps what we want to do is we want to bring it out and share with our community, to share emotionally with our community. And in doing so, we'll get an, an one step closer to activating it. Yeah? We'll get better ideas. We'll get newer ideas. We'll be able to move our ideas out into the world. So what I think this is saying is it, when we're unsure of our new, uh, new, our new passions, our new desires to create, we should share with our community. And then with what we get from our community, from the emotional exchange, interchange, we'll be able to get up on our horse and take our new ideas and figure out what to do with it, you know, to activate our creativity, to get ideas moving. So that's what I've got. What, is the, what do you get from this? Let me know in the comments below. So what do you think? Is this a deck you'd be interested in getting? Really, again, warning, the cardstock is really, really, really thin. Uh, but the images are gorgeous. Um, the my, Major Arcana is going to take me some time to, to, to get friendly with. But if you like that art style, the, the diverse art style, it's a very interestingly created deck, and I'm very happy to have it. So, friends, like this video if you got something out of it, if you were happy to see this deck laid out for you. Um, and subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed. Uh, com comment below, what do you think? And share this with somebody who you think might be interested in some tango-based tarot. And friends, now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.